Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video of the week for the 5% series for game week 14. Now when I started this series at the beginning of last season, it was my goal to get these videos down to 5 minutes each. So the idea was people who want to do okay but don't want to be doing loads of research would watch this, take them 5 minutes a week, 10 at the most and that's it done till the next game week. But as time's been going on, especially this season, my videos have been getting longer and longer, which I realise might be really annoying for some people. So rather than try and compress it, I'm going to try and remember to put chapters at the bottom of the video. So if you just want to get to a certain section, you can skip ahead and miss all the me waffling about whatever. So hopefully some of you will find that a bit easier. And then I don't have to feel so rushed about trying to have to get through this very, very quickly. All right then, so the point of this series in case you're new to this, is there's a lot of people play the game maybe in work leagues or with family, friends, etc. And they haven't got time to do lots of research and they want to do all right in their mini leagues and they just want someone to say, look, just do this, just do that. Whereas a lot of content creators will talk about several players and then be quite non-committal about what you actually need to do. So the idea of this is I show you a load of players that we use throughout the season and you can pretty much choose any combination of these players and you'll hopefully finish top 5%. So I hope that makes sense. So uh, a couple of things i go through first. I got this interesting message from Fresh and Clean 3000. They asked, Mule, are you guaranteeing a top 5% finish if I follow your tips? <laughs> Which I found very amusing. <laughs> so I gave an answer to that, of course. But the answer is verbally, no, I'm not guaranteeing a top 5% finish. However... The handful of people that I know did follow this religiously last season, they will finish top 5%. There's a couple of others that partially followed it, but also made their own choices and players along the way. I know a couple of those finished just outside the top 5%. Could have been coincidence. As for myself, I didn't follow this last season. I just did lots of crazy things for fun, and I was well outside the top 5%. But previous years, I've been inside the top 5%, so this year I am following this system. But no, I'm not guaranteeing a top 5% finish, but I think you could do. So I'm now going to explain, I've not shown this before, the maths behind this from a very high level. Now this is the y-axis is showing 100% and across the top you have the game week. And it only matters where you are in game week 38. So your goal is on the first game week, you want to be in the top 100%. So that means you just have a team in the first game week and then you will be in the top 100%, which means you're on course to finish top 5% following this system. And then all we need to do each game week is be within 92% of what our previous week's goal is and we're going to be all right. So I'll show you that. So game week one, the end of game week one, you're in the top 100%. Game week two, you want to be in the top 92%. So if there's 10 million teams playing, as long as you're around about the 9 million mark rank or higher, you're okay. Then 92% of that game week three, you want to be in the 84.6%. 92% of that by game week four, you're on 77.9%. Game week five, if you keep being within 92% of where you were before, you'll be at 71.6%, which means if there's 10 million players and on game week five, your rank was around 7 million mark, you're okay. You're still on target. Doing this by game week 38, if you can keep within the 92% of where you are, you're going to finish 4.6%. So we've just had game week 13. So if you're currently around 3.7 million rank, you're doing fine. You should be okay. If you're outside of that, you could still be all right. There are somebody, I think, joined game week, it was either 17 or 19 last season, and they were... 3 million and something rank, certainly well outside the top 30%. And they wildcarded, because it was the World Cup, followed the system and they finished well within the top 5%. So I suggest whatever your rank is at the moment, if you start following this, you've got a good chance of finishing top 5%, which means pretty much you're right in your mini league. So <laughs> hopefully that made sense. If you're doing worse than about 3.5 million and you want me to have a look at your team, that's fine. Just drop the uh, the ID, the code in the, uh, the the comments and I'll have a look and see if I've got any suggestions specifically for your team. So as we go through this video, we look at different players and I've presented them all on white card backgrounds. However, some players 
have a different colored background. The different colors mean different things as follows. If it's a yellow background, it means they're new to the system this week. Green means they're a good buy, so they're already in the system. But due to the immediate fixtures coming up, I think they're a good buy and they're okay to buy. Grey is bench fodder. That means we are in, they're in the system because they're cheap and they enable us to have 11 good players elsewhere. So try to have no more than three grey players, but you don't have to have any. Blue means they're sellable soon, which means they're okay to have at the moment, but we may look to move them on soon. Orange means they're sellable now if you want to. Red means sell them. So if you're wildcarding now, or you want to make lots of changes, buy players that are yellow, green, up to three greys, and white card backgrounds. Don't buy any that are blue, orange, or red. If you want to change players around in your system, then I suggest the players you get rid of are red or orange, possibly blue. You can sell it white if you want. And then you want to go for the green and the yellows, perhaps. So hopefully when I go through this, it'll all make sense. So with all that out the way, Let's see if we can see how the scores went for game week 13 and then what the plans are for game week 14. In game week 13, the goalkeepers in the system scored as followed, which was an average of 3.1. And then if you had Turner, he would have simply been on your bench and got nothing anyway. Regarding the expensive defenders, this is what they scored. If you had two of these, they'd have averaged 4.8. Ideally, we'd like five, but it was a low scoring game week across the board. So these would have averaged 4.8. Of the cheaper defenders, two of these would have averaged 6.4 points for you. And then we had some very cheap defenders as well. Some of you would probably have had Lascelles because he was an enabler. He got seven points. That was nice. For the more expensive midfielders, pretty bland, I'd say. Average of 9.8 if you had two of these. Cheaper midfielders, they averaged 8.6. And then we had some enabling midfielders as well. For the forwards, the expensive forwards, these were the most expensive six in our system. They averaged 3.4, not very good. And then these are the cheaper forwards, average 3.6 points. So I looked as normal. People I know are doing this system compared to the average. I think perhaps on average, we tended to get slightly red arrows. But I know some people got a small green arrow. I got a small red arrow, but that's because... I was being a little bit creative, but I'm okay with that. And I'll hopefully do a video tomorrow that actually looks at my team and what my plans are and what I'm personally doing, but still within the confines of this system. Now, regarding this coming game week, the goalkeepers in the system, we have Edison. He's completely sellable. He's currently at 5.5, but that is a lot for a keeper. And Man City have an amazing habit of conceding a goal a game. On paper, they should be keeping clean sheets, but I don't think they're keeping quite enough to justify five and a half million they're at home to Tottenham this game week at home they tend to do a bit better but Tottenham they can score goals so interesting you don't absolutely don't have to sell Edison if you've got him chances are you've got more interesting moves to make but if you're wild carding now or changing keeper I'm suggesting you don't bother with Edison Pope's perfectly okay so Raya this is a new entry this week it looks like He's almost certainly going to be playing most of the Arsenal games. Arsenal have a very nice run coming up. If you've got nothing else to do and you've got Edison or maybe another keeper you don't care for, getting in Raya is a good move. It's not worth, I think, taking a minus four hit this week to do it. But if you've got the capacity to do an extra transfer, Raya is a good move. Onana. Now, Man United, they've had several clean sheets the last few game weeks. But you need to keep in mind they've been playing easier fixtures so it's not surprising they got clean sheets they're now away to Newcastle home to Chelsea who can score a lot home to Bournemouth away to Liverpool and their fixtures aren't quite as good so just because Onana's had a few clean sheets in the recent past doesn't mean he's going to be going forward so he's all right 4.8 he's okay I'd say he's nothing special Johnston for Crystal Palace I wouldn't get him in now but he's still got Week after next game week, he's at home to Bournemouth, so he's certainly okay for holding on to for now. Flecken for Brentford, home to Luton, that could be good this week. Pickford, Everton's interesting. He he's got a chance of bonuses with save points, etc. They're a bit hit and miss, but he's only four point four and runs a cheaper keepers now. Ariola four point three. By the way, all the cards I'm showing now are done in order of price. And then we also have still in the system Turner. It's possible he won't play any other games. He may come in occasionally. 
So you definitely don't want to be buying Turner. And if you wildcard, you don't want to be getting Turner. But it's not worth taking a hit to move him on. Regarding the defenders, I've made Trent green, even though he's very expensive. If you happen to have enough money, he's a player worth getting. Same for Trippier, very expensive, but he's got a good chance of getting points in any game. White's 5.7. He's very good. He's just coming back from injury. I think he might have got a minute in the last game. But it's not worth buying White. You may as well spend 0.2 left, less and buy Saliba. White and Saliba may well get very similar points between now and the end of the season. So if you've not got any Arsenal defenders, Saliba would be the best one to get if you can afford him. Then James, he was introduced last week. He's not playing this game because he got banned. I've not made him orange because I think if you bought him, he's worth holding on to. They've got some good fixtures coming up. Poro, he takes a lot of free kicks and corners, etc. He's absolutely worth keeping. So even when he's not going to keep a clean sheet, like probably this week at the Etihad when he plays against Man City, he could get an assist. Anderson for Palace, still got a couple of OK games. Cash, away to Bournemouth this week. He's not always playing 90 minutes. They're just not keeping clean sheets at the moment. If you want to move him on, you can. You don't have to sell him this week, but maybe after this week, we'll make him a proper sell and you have to move him on. But it's up to you if you keep him or not. I sold him a couple of weeks ago. He was in my team. As stupid and I've had a look. It looks like he's actually going to be out for a while. So if you've held on to him for this long, I'm saying get rid of him, even if it's for a hit for minus four, move him on and buy a different defender that is worth having. Gabriel, 4.9, will probably play most games for Arsenal, assuming he's fit. They've got some nice fixtures coming up. A Kanji for 4.9 for Man City. Any Man City player apart from maybe Haaland. A little bit hit and miss if they're going to play or not. If you've got a Kanji, I wouldn't bother moving him on. If you want to, you can. But if I was wildcarding equally, I wouldn't actually buy a Kanji. Udogi, he seems to be fit again now, 4.8 million. Simakas, he should be around for Liverpool for a few weeks yet before Robertson's back. Pinnock for Brentford. Now, I've not made him green, even though he's got some nice fixtures coming up. Luton this week, Sheffield United in two game weeks' time. Because in game week 18, Brentford aren't playing at all, neither are Man City. If it wasn't for that, I would have made Pinnock green. Now, you don't want to have more than two, maybe three at the most, Man City and Brentford players combined. So if you've only got a couple of Man City and Brentford players, you could get Pinnock in if you're looking for a cheaper defender. So if you've got a stupid Ant, a stupid Ant to Pinnock, that's OK. But don't load up on too many because game week 18, you're in danger of being short of players. Colwell, he seems to be back from injury now. 4.5 for Chelsea, perfectly good. Maguire, 4.3. As I mentioned earlier... United have had their easier fixtures, but at 4.3, he's a bit of an enabler and he's fine. And then LaSalle's nice and cheap at 4.1 and Kabore. Kabore, I think, is injured, but you'd only be getting one of these to free up funds to use elsewhere. Regarding the midfielders, Salah is green, worth having, playing Fulham, Sheffield United, Palace in the next three. If you've not got Salah and you can afford him and you can get to him without taking maybe more than one hit, you could take more if you want to as your team, then I think he's worth having. Sun, very good player, but away to Man City, so not worth getting this week. I'm aware some managers are selling Sun. You can if you want to. I've got Sun. I've got no intention of selling him at the moment. Saka, Arsenal coming to a good run of fixtures. He's probably worth getting. Saka and Salah are both ticking over nicely with points. Rashford, he did get a goal last game week, but it was a bit of a pity penalty that Bruno Fernandes let him take. He's really not been doing very well recently. You don't have to sell him, but if you've got him, he's a fine one to sell to free up some funds. Odegaard's all right, 8.3. He's back from fitness, uh, from uh, injury. Fernandes, he's normally on penalties. He gets quite a few bonus points. He gets attacking returns. He's okay. If I had Fernandes, I wouldn't be desperate to sell him. But equally, I wouldn't be buying him now either. either. Martinelli, perfectly OK. He's only 7.8. Slightly cheaper midfielders. Bowen. Now, I've made him sellable. At the time of recording, we don't know if he's playing at the weekend or not. If when you come to sort your team out, it turns out he is going to be playing, then I'd absolutely keep hold of Bowen. 
But if we don't know, then it's okay to sell him. But if your bench is good enough, it's equally okay to keep him. But he's um, they've got some nice fixtures coming up, but he's not worth having if he's not going to be fit. Foden, 7.5. He's okay, hopefully. Embremo. Now, loads of managers will be bringing in Embremo this week. If you can get to him, it's worth bringing him in. If for nothing else, if he gets decent points in the next few weeks and you don't have him, that is going to hurt your rank. So if you can get him and you've not got him, it's worth getting. Is it worth taking a hit for? Possibly. I mean, if I had Rashford and I'd already made a transfer, I'd possi- I'd be willing to swap, I think, Rashford for Embremo at the moment. Yeah, even for a minus four. So I think he's worth a minus four to get in. Sterling, he's all right. Seven million. They've got some nice fixtures coming up. DRB's blue. So they're playing Bournemouth this week. But after this game week, it might be we want to move DRB on. He doesn't get 90 minutes. He's been a bit disappointing recently. Matoma, he's another one that looks like he could be out for a while. It's still not clear, but he's perfectly sellable. Ward Prowse, 6.2. We're getting a bit cheaper now. Takes a lot of set pieces. If there's a penalty, it'd be him taking it. He's all right. Gordon, 5.9. Now, the thing with Gordon, the reason he's not green, even though he's very good, is Newcastle do have a lot of games they need to play outside of the Premiership. We don't know when players are going to get rested, when they're maybe going to get brought off early. Gordon is a very good player. It's fine if you want to get him. He's just not quite green, but he's all right. And then cheaper midfielders, Gibbs White, he did well last week, only 5.7. Neto, 5.6, possibly still injured, but he'd be very close to coming back. And after this game week, he's at home to Burnley and Forest, so a good player to have. Palmer, he's sometimes grey, sometimes green, but he is worth bringing in. They're playing, they're at home to Brighton and Hove Albion this game week. Brighton haven't kept a clean sheet since forever, I think since the Garden of Eden. So there's a good chance Chelsea are going to score this game week. So Palmer may well be involved. Nakamba, he's in here because he's cheap, 4.4. Regarding the forwards, Haaland is green. I don't have Haaland, but that's kind of a crazy person. You really should have Haaland if you can. It's not worth taking lots of hits to get him in, in my opinion. But if you're wildcarding or you're making some changes, try and make sure you have Haaland. Watkins, perfectly solid player. He's ticking along nicely. If you want to free up some funds and you've got Watkins, you can sell him. They're playing Bournemouth this week. But then they've got Man City and Arsenal. Not so easy, those games. Jesus, I haven't seen any other content creators bigging him up, but he's back from injury. He's playing. They've got some nice fixtures. He's a good player to have, in my opinion. Darwin Nunes, still a good player to have. Alvarez, been a bit disappointing recently, but I wouldn't be desperate to sell him. But if you wanted to swap Alvarez for Darwin... Or sell Alvarez to free up some funds to get a better player somewhere else. That's okay. Hoyland might be injured. Not quite sure. But away to Newcastle. Then playing Chelsea. Then Bournemouth. Then away to Liverpool. It's okay to let him go. At some point this season, surely he's going to get into a good streak of scoring goals. But it's probably not worth having at the moment. But he's not a must sell. He's just completely sellable. For the cheaper forwards... Solanke at 6.5 is worth it. Now, one of the players on the previous page, most of them are better than Solanke. But if you want a cheaper forward so you can spend money elsewhere, Solanke is a very good choice to have. Visser, he would be green at Brentford, home to Luton, then Brighton, then Sheffield United. However, he's missing game week 18. So if you've got Embremo and Haaland, you could get Visser. But then in game week 18, as things stand, you will have no bench. But this is, this is OK, not quite green. And Ketia, OK, now Jesus is back. He's probably not going to get much game time. He's absolutely fine to be moving on. Gel Pedro, Brighton do have enough injuries whereby Pedro may start getting a few more minutes in the next few games. But this next game week, they're away to Chelsea. So I've not made him green. But if you've got him, he's absolutely fine to keep. And he's a cheap player. He's an enabler. You get to spend money elsewhere when you got him. Morris, a good player. In as much as he seems to play 90 minutes, he's the penalty taker. He will sometimes get points. He's a good player to have on your bench and to enable you to spend money elsewhere. Adobe, I did make him red, but I'll put him back to green. If you've got him, 
you've probably got him because you wanted funds elsewhere. If you're wild carding, don't buy Azebayo. But you don't need to sell him either. And then Archer, 4.6. He's nice and cheap. So the benching order for the goalkeepers. The way this works, we've got nine keepers in our system. I'm going to show you eight. The first one you've got, the first one you see that I show you that you've got, I suggest you put on your bench. But when it comes to the benching order and the captaincy, these are my opinions. They're to guide you. If you want to do something else, that's absolutely fine. So I'm suggesting if you've got Turner, put him on your bench. If you don't have Turner, but you have Johnston, away to West Ham, I suggest he goes on your bench. If you have neither of those but Pickford, away to Forest, he's on your bench. Next choice is Onana, away to Newcastle. I'll expect Newcastle to score. Ariola home to Palace. West Ham haven't been very good defensively. So if you've got the one, two of the five keepers on the page, I'm suggesting you play Ariola. If Ariola is your own one, the only keep you've got so far, he's on your bench. Then it'd be Edison at home to Tottenham. Then Pope at home to Man United. And then Flecken at home to Luton. And I've not shown Rare because I've run out of space, but if you've got Rare, you're playing him. Regarding your other players, and this is actually the part of this video that takes me the longest, working out what I think the bench order is. And I'm aware this will differ to other people. This is just my suggested order. And this is taking into account lots of different bits of information. So the first player you see that I show you, I suggest is position three on the bench, the next one position two, the last one position one. And I'm not showing all the players, for example, Haaland and Salah, because if you've got those, you're playing them. So I'm suggesting Adibayo is on your bench from Luton, then Kabore, then Nakamba, then Matoma. The reason Matoma is so low is we don't know he's playing and there's a risk he'll play for a few minutes. So the chances are he's going to get no point or one point if he plays. So that's why he's so low. Morris, Hoyland, again, unsure about his injury status. He may play for a few minutes. So it's not worth risking him being in your starting eleven. Colwell for Chelsea. Neto for Wolves. Don't know if Neto's going to play. If he does, it may be a very small amount. Archer for Sheffield United. Anderson for Palace. And Ketia, Gibbs-White, Maguire, Pinnock, Udogi, Rashford, Akanji, Jao Pedro. And we're going to be getting on to some good players now. Porro for Tottenham, but he's away to Man City. Cash, Lascelles, Vissa, Ward Prowse, Solanke, Sterling, Palmer, Simicass. Hopefully by now you've got three players on your bench, but if not, let's look at the last row. Bowen, if you find out, if he's still flagged by the time you set your team and by the weekend, let's say, I would be tempted to put him on the bench, I think. Oh, it's difficult. No, let's, let's keep him in this position. Let's keep him in this position. It's, it's just hard to know. <laughs> we just don't want Bowen coming on for a few minutes at the end to check he's all right, because that's going to be one point. But if he's got a reasonable chance of starting, he will be worth playing. Then Fernandez, Alvarez, Diaby, White for Arsenal, Son, Gordon, Gabriel, Martinelli. So, for example, if you've got Jesus, he's not in this page, he's playing. If you've got... Um, Saliba, he's playing. The several other players would be playing. If you have two Arsenal players, for example, you have Saliba and White, it's okay to move White further down the benching order if you want to. If you play two Arsenal defenders and they keep a clean sheet and they've got a reasonably good chance, that's a lot of points for you. However, if they let in a goal, of course, that's two of your players probably aren't going to do very well. And White is just back from injury. He's probably going to get 90 minutes or at least 80, but there's a chance he'll only get half a game. So that's why I've got Gabriel higher than White. If White plays this coming game week and the following game week, White would be higher than Gabriel. Regarding captaincy, there's a good choice this week. But Haaland, if I had him, I think he'd be my captain choice. He's the safest captain choice regarding your rank because lots of teams own him. I think a lot of teams are probably going to play him. So... He'd be my first choice, but I don't have Haaland. Salah at home to Fulham, a very good choice for captaincy. And Bremo, another home game, nice easy home game. Any of those three are fine, and I've put them in my preferred order, but you choose who you want. Other possibilities for captain, we have Darwin, Saka and Watkins. 
if you've got two of these, great. Choose one as captain, one as vice captain. That's my suggestion. But don't choose Salah and Darwin just in case randomly the game gets postponed. You never want to choose a captain and a vice captain from the same team. Unless it's a double game week, then you might be feeling lucky. If you don't have two of these, then I suggest you choose one of these and then a good attacking player. That's So one of your midfielders or strikers, if you've got one that was a green card, just choose them. If not, just choose a player from one of the big clubs like Man City, Liverpool, Newcastle. They'd be all right. Arsenal, they'd be good as well. Regarding the background picture, as always, the weather's making the news and they're getting all frightened. Ooh, we might be in for a cold spell. Now, an interesting thing, as far as stats are concerned, you'd have thought maybe when it's colder, there are more goals or fewer goals. It doesn't seem to make much difference, maybe marginally fewer goals. However, if there's a sudden unexpected cold snap, then the stats suggest there are fewer goals. So we've had cold weather announced. It's not going to make a difference. But if we had a normal week and then unexpectedly on the Saturday, there's a sudden drop in temperature, then it's worth thinking, ah, oh, there's fewer goals. Let's play the defenders. But anyway, snowman playing football because we might have been for some colder weather. And there we have it, my slightly longer but guilt-free waffling on for the 5% series. Now you've got the titles at the bottom, you can skip to wherever you want to. So some of you probably haven't made it this far, and that's absolutely fine. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll try and do a video tomorrow saying what I'm doing with my team. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>